perfectly observed and fitting tribute the thoughts of the footballing family very much remain with those affected it's England against the USA at Wembley here on Five Live. The reigning European champions against the reigning world champions and both sides in great form. 22 games unbeaten for England. They are yet to lose under Serena Wiegmann. 21 games unbeaten for the USA. Stephen Warnock, what is the key to victory for England tonight? Well, organisation to be hard, to be solid, compact and organised but also to be expressive out of possession, go and take the game to the USA and, and make it difficult for them. As Izzy said before the game, this will be England's probably hardest challenge physically, so they're gonna have to make sure that they manage the game correctly. And going back to our argument in the build-up, Vicky, it looks like from kickoff here that Lauren Hemp is gonna be starting down the middle. With... So you won. Well, well done. yeah, won, I don't he? wanna sound <laughs> smug, but listen. And, but the, do you know what? I will acknowledge the fact that Chloe Kelly's on the left wing. And Beth Mead's starting on the right. So yeah. we shall see how fluid this front line is. Alessia Russo out injured. Ellen White, of course, retired. So a new look, slightly forward line for the Lionesses, who are in position as we are underway here at Wembley, here on BBC Radio 5 Live. England against the USA in this women's friendly international as the ball goes out of play. USA thought they had the throw, but it will be left instead by Lindsay Horan for Lucy Bronze. So throw on the halfway line for England who are playing from left to right, all in white, the USA all in dark blue. And here is their star woman for so many years and still at 37, she's the first name that so many look for on the team sheet. Megan Rapino, but she can't keep hold of possession and it's cleared away by the USA. You do pick it up once more. And they win the throw on this near side, just inside the England half. Rapino taking the throw quickly, and that's a good spin by Sophia Smith down the left-hand side into the penalty area. Only chance for the USA. She went for the near post, and Mary Earps makes what was in the end a comfortable save. Yeah, early chance for the USA. Quick throw from Megan Rapino using all of her experience. Throws it straight down the line. Millie Bright tries to anticipate early doesn't misses it and Sophia Smith that play I was talking about pre-match such a threat down the middle with her pace you know it's an early sniff for her England in possession just outside their own penalty area yes she broke the Portland Thorns regular season scoring record in the NWSL Sophia Smith 22 years old 14 goals in 18 games and one of this new crop of USA players who've been eased in over the last couple of years and have high hopes of shining at the World Cup next summer. The USA in position and we can take you through the two lineups. Mary Earps in goal for England. The back four of Lucy Bronze, Millie Bright the captain this evening with Leah Williamson out injured, Alex Greenwood and Rachel Daly. Ahead of them it's Georgia Stanway and Kira Walsh with Chloe Kelly, Fran Kirby and Beth Mead supporting Lauren Hemp up front. As Lucy Bronze chests it down just inside the England half, here is Stanway, lays it off to Kira Walsh, who tried to play it through to Kirby, but it's well intercepted by Horan. And Horan will try and set Rapino away. It bounces off bronze, but straight to Rapino. First time ball, well intercepted by Millie Bright. And Kira Walsh will pick it up for England. The ball all the way back to Bright. Smith is there lurking, pressuring Mary Earps as England try and play out from the back. The dark blue shirts of the USA closing them down. But now they just ease off as England play it out to the right-hand side. And Lucy Bronze, she's being pursued by the purple-haired Megan Rapino. Bronze squeezes it in to Lauren Hemp, who lays it off to Beth Mead. Advantage played. Here is Mead bearing down on the USA penalty area. Can't find Chloe Kelly out to the left-hand side. And the ball is played out to Trinity Rodman. He plays the ball over the top, looking for the run of Smith once more. Almost a little bit of a mix-up between Greenwood and Mary Earps there. In the end, Greenwood takes charge of the situation and plays it out to Rachel Daly. But the game starting at a frenetic pace as England have it inside their own penalty area. Can't bring it in yet because Mary Earps goes down once more. But she plays it over the top to Lucy Bronze. And now, Izzy Christensen. Yeah, excellent start for the fans, not for the managers, I'd say. They'd probably want either of their teams just to get hold of the possession a little bit, put their foot on it and start dictating the tempo. And that's what Kira Walsh has just done exactly in that second I said that. I think what we've seen early on from America is, is that they're looking to get the ball into forward areas very quick. Megan Rapino, who set away Sophia Smith down the left-hand side. It was a quick throw in, launch forward as quick as she can. 
she should have actually squared the ball to Rose Lavelle and it would have been 1-0 after sort of a minute into this game but the USA really looking to hit the, the, uh, the ball early as they can to the forward players. Four minutes gone and it is still 0-0 here at Wembley on Five Live. England knocking it around at the back. So I can take you through the USA team. Naya in goal, the back four of Huerta, Germa, Cook and Fox. Ahead of them it's Sullivan, Haran, the captain with Sabrin on the bench and Lavelle. Formerly of Manchester City with Smith, Rapino and Rodman up front as England drive forward with George's Stanway. Lays it off to Beth Mead just outside the area, curls it in straight into the arms of Naya. Good chance for England. Combination between Hemp, Beth Mead and Georgia Stanway down this right-hand side for England has been promising so far. Really good link-up play between Stanway and Beth Mead. Stanway drive forward with the ball. We saw that so often in the summer, didn't we? She back it into the path of Beth Mead. And Beth Mead coming in off this right-hand side. She is not afraid to shoot on her left, and that's what she's done. Didn't quite execute right, but good early chance for England. USA in possession, just to the left of their own penalty area. Yes, I was... Wondering if we were going to see a repeat of that goal in the quarter-final against Spain. It just opened up for Stanway, didn't it? We know she can hit them. We certainly do. As the USA come down the left-hand side with a lively Sophia Smith. Plays the ball in. It's intercepted by England and will be played out now by Kira Walsh. And now Lucy Bronze, England midway through their own half. Goal is here with the USA as the interception is made and played straight out of play for an England throw. Lucy Bronze will take it midway through the England half. I think the dynamics of the USA midfield with Andy Sullivan sitting in that number six role, she's you know very defensive minded midfielder, will always give the back four protection and also protection for Rose Lavelle and Lindsay Horan pushing forward in those eight or ten positions. Real threat for the USA. And the USA have stolen it. Here is Smith, left hand side of the penalty area. Millie Boris is there with her, pulls it back, looking for Haran, who does pick it up, but then is challenged by Georgia Stanway, and Wembley likes that, and here go England up on the counter with Fran Kirby over the halfway line. She's being pursued by Huerta, the USA right back, and so Kirby will stop and check and send it back to Kira Walsh, Georgia Stanway now, to Alex Greenwood, who is getting her opportunity today, is he, after Leah Williamson's injury. Millie Bright is taking the armband, but... Greenwood a player as England just play the ball out for a USA throw in the halfway line. A play that Serena Wiegman said at the Euros, it was such a, a hard call for Alex Greenwood, impressing so much at centre half, but Brighton's Williamson very much established there and, and found it hard to dislodge Rachel Daly at left back, which is the other position she can play. Yeah, and that's the thing, Serena Wiegman, you're not afraid to make big decisions, and this is what this England team's, team's needed for years, and yes, it was a big decision leaving Alex Greenwood out, because of her form coming into the tournament with Manchester City. But, you know, it was the right decision in the end. Lee Williamson and Millie Bright had a fantastic tournament. And, you know, Alex has got a gold medal around her neck and she's been a superb asset to the squad throughout. Good play by Trinity Rodman over on the far side for the USA. The daughter of the NBA legend, Dennis Rodman, just 20 years old, already shortlisted for the Ballon d'Or this year as Alex Greenwood plays the ball away and does well there, plays it off Smith. He's gone over to that right-hand side and it will be a throw to England deep in their own territory. But overall, Stephen, the USA enjoying the better of this opening seven and a half minutes. Yeah, they just look very dynamic going forward. Uh, Sophia Smith has more than one occasion looked to pull out onto the, the, the right-hand side of England and get in between Millie Bright. And when Lucy Bronze goes forward, she realises that that's an opportunity for her to get in a 1v1 situation with Millie Bright. I'm not sure Millie Bright will want to be in that uh, position too often in this game. England have lost the ball midway through their own half, but Lindsay Horan can't make any headway. And the USA will have to come again. Smith's central position now is dispossessed out to Rodman as the USA looks to build down the right-hand side. Good run by Rodman, who crosses the ball in, looking for Rapino. The header is won well by Lucy Bronze against the two-time World Cup winner and former Ballon d'Or recipient, Megan Rapino. But the USA again pick up the second ball and send it all the way back to their goalkeeper, all in lurid orange this evening here in Wembley. Melissa Nea, but again, as the USA play that ball over the top, it'll go all the way through to Mary Ertz. But as you say, Izzy, it's so clear what the USA are looking to do in terms of just get the ball forward as soon as possible exactly. and use that pace and trickery of Smith. Exactly. Um, just then when the ball went back, the central defenders for the US had the ball. They had USA had five players up against England's back four, you know, just ready to, to lock into that space behind, looking for that just, you know, straightforward ball over the top. 
to run and create something. Alex Greenwood intercepts for England, exchanges passes with Kira Walsh and Rose Lavelle is just lurking in that dangerous number 10 role. She can drop back more defensively, Lavelle, but she's a player that England just have to pick up those ghosting runs as they ghost themselves down the right-hand side. Here is their player of the year, Beth Mead, plays the ball in, looking for Hemp. Hemp will get there and Hemp will scramble it in! And England have the breakthrough at Wembley from one end to the other. And of course it's Beth Mead involved, but Lauren Hemp is there, playing through the middle. England's number nine on the night. And England, against the run of play, take an early lead against the world champions. England won, USA nil. Tell you what, she might not be a natural number nine, Vicky, but her movement there off the ball was superb. All the best number nines, what she did is she peeled off the back shoulder, created the space, in that six yard area for, for Beth Mead just to put the ball into that area of uncertainty between the goalkeeper and the centre back caused the error from the centre back and then she slotted it home but it's a super finish, super movement really good build up play from England and Lauren Hemp, can she play the number nine tick? Yes she can So England take the lead against the world champions the USA We are waiting to get underway we do have VAR, but they are happy. Gone on technology is as well, definitely cross the line. And the USA get us underway. Well, the perfect start on this October night here at Wembley for the European champions against a side who they've only beaten twice in their last 16 encounters. But this is an England who made history over the summer. This is an England playing with confidence as Hemp won't reach that ball played into the penalty area. And the listener comes. When we just recap that goal, Stephen, USA might look at that and, and feel that they should have dealt with that ball a little bit better. But as Izzy says, it's the movement from Hemp that causes the problem. Yeah, it's such a difficult ball, but there was lovely play from Lucy Bronze in the right back position. She got a nice little nutmeg in. America, uh, USA are very good at pressing the ball in high positions. And it's when you beat that press, then you'll find a route out. And Beth Mead down the right hand side. She came short, she went long in behind. The full back. Um, Emily Fox couldn't deal with the movement and then the ball in from Beth Mead is just delicious, it's just perfect. They've won the ball back once more and Kirby will squeeze it out to the left hand side and Lauren Hemp, it's Mead now in the box that Hemp is looking for, it's intercepted by Andy Sullivan but all of a sudden the USA, I'm not going to use the word shaky but just look a tad uncertain as the ball goes out for an England throw. Yeah this is what Serena Vigman would have wanted from the England forward players, they've got now they're getting a little bit of fluidity across the front three with Frank Kirby making it a four you know they've got Lauren Hemp drifting out onto that left position we've got a dropping in deep to create that extra number 10 in possession it's just causing a little bit of uncertainty in the US back line they can't deal with it here coming in the best spell of the game they've taken the lead through Lauren Hemp's finish 12 minutes played here on five live at Wembley as Alex Green returns and plays the ball forward to Kira Walsh, the world record transfer after joining Barcelona this summer. And here's a Barcelona teammate, Lucy Bronze, who fizzes the ball across. Half a shout for handball there. It's spun away off Naomi Gurma. The USA play it out of the penalty area, but Rapino's given it away. Here is Beth Mead. England just suddenly, you can see the confidence flowing through them. They were under the cosh in the opening minutes from the USA. That goal from Lauren Hemp, this is the sort of play that we saw when they were at their very best en route to winning the European Championship this summer. As Kira Walsh has it and plays it out to the left and Rachel Daly. This was the great thing about the Euros though, is that they grew into games. They, they understood the pressure that was coming at the game. And there's big pressure tonight because of the fans that have come out to, to watch this game and the occasion that it, that it is. But they've grown now into the game, they've worked their way into it and now you're seeing the confidence come out in the players. Yes, a packed Wembley Stadium once again after we saw records tumble at the Euros this summer. A record crowd for a men's or a women's final. Over 87,000 enjoyed that night at the end of July. And the fans in here this evening so far enjoying what they're seeing from England. 13 minutes gone and it's England who lead the USA by a goal to nil as the USA have a throw midway through their own heart. Yeah, the left back for USA, Emily Fox, just watching her down here, she's taking a throw in. You know, that goal came on her side. 
you know, it came down this right-hand side for England, and she is a player who I've been really impressed with in the past. Given away by Rapino, brilliant three ball for Chloe Kelly, inadvertently Kelly into the penalty area, ball across is behind Kirby, Hemp just caught it first time with her left foot, but couldn't get a clean connection, and Alyssa Nea will gather gratefully. So still 1-0, chance there for Hemp as the USA come over the halfway line. England get themselves in a bit of a mess. Sophia Smith all went down right on the edge of the penalty area and it's been given as a free kick. I think it was just outside the box, but there in a flash is the danger that Smith causes. And we'll stay with this for now because we do have VAR and Stephen Warnock is grimacing to my right. If it's on the line, it's a penalty. It's been given as a free kick. What my, do we think? My initial thought was it was on the line. I think this is a penalty. I think it's very close. It just depends how they see it. Does the initial contact come in the box? We're just seeing a replay of it now. Wow, I wouldn't want to be in the VAR booth. That's all I'm saying. That's difficult because Sophia Smith, the one who's causing Rachel Daly into that challenge, one of her feet is planted in the box and one of her foot, the other foot's planted outside of the box. It's made it a very difficult decision, but it looks like it's going to stand with a free kick up just on the line, just on the edge of the line. Yeah, it's one of those where the, the bulk of the contact from Daly is outside the box. We're taking the free kick. Megan Rapino fires it into the wall and it is a corner to the USA. You trail by a goal to nil. Quickly to the championship. Sahel Sahi. Queen's Park Rangers nil, Reading nil. It's been a cagey opening, but an early opportunity for Queen's Park Rangers. Tyler Roberts, left foot shot, well saved by the Reading goalkeeper. Nil nil. Here at Wembley, England lead the USA by a goal to nil, but the USA have a corner and Megan Rapino is over it. She swings it high into the penalty area and the header was met there by the centre half, Alana Cook. But it is harmless and it drifts wide. Alana Cook, who was also eligible to represent England, trained with them under Phil Neville back in September 2019 before committing to the USA. She had played for the USA throughout the youth levels as well. So goal kick to England. But a concern for England here, player down in the penalty area and the medical staff are coming on and it's the goal scorer at Lauren Hemp back there defending the corner and she seems to have picked up a bit of a problem. I think it was from that set piece, the subsequent set piece that Megan Rapino took from that angle on her right foot on that far right position for the USA. She, instead of curling the ball, she's actually just fired it like a shot and it hit Lauren Hemp in the face, went out for a corner, and then they just carried on playing. I'm so actually really surprised that that Hempo actually carried on playing, and now she's getting attention, but strange one. Good good defending, by the way. A set-piece coach will be very happy with that, taking one in the face. That's number one rule, isn't it? <laughs> of being in the wall, let it hit your face. So 17 minutes gone, Lauren Hemp still receiving treatment. England won. USA, the world champions nil here on five live tomorrow two premier league commentaries we have for you chelsea against wolves from three o'clock and then brighton against tottenham follows at 5 30. And three commentaries you can join us for on sunday west ham against fulham at two arsenal against liverpool at 4 30 both of those on five live and crystal palace against leeds is over on five sports extra from two o'clock so lauren hemp still receiving treatment here and serena Wiegmann will have some thinking to do. Serena Wiegmann, who has history herself as a manager with the USA, reached the 2019 World Cup final with the Netherlands, lost to them there, and also lost in the Olympic quarterfinals at Tokyo last summer. As we see, Lauren Hemp just getting back up to her feet. It's half-time in England's World Cup warm-up game against Fiji in the Rugby League. Matt Newsom is there for us. Yeah, England 28, Fiji nil. So far, so good for Sean Wayne on his only hit out before the tournament starts proper against Samoa last week, uh, next week, should I say. Uh, Fiji were almost picked to, to try and replicate the physicality that the Samoans are going to bring at uh, St. James's Park in Newcastle next weekend. But England have made light work of them. Dom Young has been excellent, scoring a try and assisting a couple of others. Andy Akers and Callum Watkins have scored on their home turf. The Salford duo, George Williams and Joe Batchelor, add in the other tries. A dominant first half there for England here in their final warm-up it's England 28 Fiji nil. Thanks Matt back underway here at Wembley as the USA break into the penalty area with Smith tries to pull the ball across and Earth just about makes the save real scramble at that near post and it's gone out of play initially for a corner but the referee 
is raising her left arm because the assistant on the far side has raised the flag and England look as though they get away with one Megan Rapino is talking over with the ball under her arm she was going to go and put it down for the corner I think she's just gone via the assistant there on the far side just to make a point that she feels the USA could have got something more but Mary Earp's doing enough there shall we say is he yeah she did enough at the near post it's Lindsay Horan who ends up being offside but yeah it was good play from the USA the combination with Rose Lavelle and Sophia Smith making that run the blind side of Alex Greenwood causing that problem yeah England did well to defend that just a word on Megan Rapino trotting over to the other side with the ball thinking it was a corner but the the lines woman clearly had a flag up I'm thinking at 37 save your legs <laughs> absolutely what an athlete she is 19 and a half minutes gone in the lead by goal to nil Georgia Stanway with a heavy collision but no surprise that Stanway is the one who has come off best in that and again we just have a break in play here it's just getting a little bit scrappy isn't it Stephen will that suit the USA or England more or neither uh, neither in, in, in all honesty I think both sets of players will want the game to flow a little bit a little bit easier um, it's Emily Fox who's just taken a blow to the face and uh, purely accidental in the collision with with uh, Georgia Stanway but I have to say Sophia Smith's movement up front is brilliant it's it's so dynamic when she makes those runs in behind and you think you've got her as a defender and you think it's okay I can see her in my eye line but such is the speed in which she accelerates to get in behind they're going to have to be so careful uh, the two centre backs of uh, Millie Bright and Alex Greenwood the, com the communication is going to have to even be the best it's ever been to make sure that you you're on guard against her and that's it when we talk about this USA side as Fox is still receiving treatment the, their history and their pedigree in the women's game is unparalleled. Four-time World Cup winners, four-time Olympic gold medalists, they're number one in the world, but they are a side in transition. But, but when we talk about teams in transition, so often it's a case of they're not going to do anything while they're in transition. The USA have players, Sophia Smith, stand out amongst those. They can do something in transition and they still have the likes of players like Megan Rapino, Lindsay Horan, Ro Rose Lavelle, who are used to winning major tournaments. I mean, it's, it's called a transition, I think, because one player is retired and that's Carly Lloyd. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the other players, they're now with the new coach. You know, they're now picking a squad more based on form rather than you know the mainstays in the squad and you know if you're not performing for your club should you be picked for your country and I think that's the same you know parallel with what the Lionesses situation is as well we've seen it with this squad come out you know the couple of players you know not in the squad because perhaps club form or maybe not getting the minutes for the club and I think you know it's it's not good for the individuals involved but it's good for the team in general and the bigger goal and the greater goal and I think that that's what we're seeing with this US team that we've just seen a load of new players that come in who we're not necessarily as familiar with we're calling it a transition well Emily Fox is not going to be able to continue here Hayley Mace 25 year old defender is coming on she's just forced her way back into the national setup first squad call up since 2018 back in August so the USA with a bit of a defensive reshuffle with Fox going off and Hayley Mace coming on the USA who trail by a goal to nil Lauren Hemp's opener inside the opening 10 minutes gives the Lionesses the lead but it's the USA coming forwards ball intercepted by Kira Walsh just outside the penalty area and Rachel Daly will pick it up ball forwards though is cut out by the USA and Haran will play it forward with a back heel tried by Smith the 20 year old is just so full of confidence and England though will pick it up with Rachel Daly on the left hand side of their penalty area Greenwood will send it back to Mary Earps who's so quickly closed down who else Smith there once again and England's playing their way out but the press from the USA the dark blue shirts is high and it pays off Rapino gets a foot in Haran now will send it to Sullivan and now here is Rose Lavelle very well dispossessed by Kira Walsh that is going to be a key battle is he in the centre of the park between Lavelle and Walsh yeah they're both former club teammates as well at Manchester City they both know each other's games probably pretty well 
Um, yeah, it's always, I've always said it's difficult playing against a midfielder who's left-footed because you don't see too many central midfielders who are left-footed in the game. Would you agree, Stephen? Yeah, very think, true. Yeah. And I just find, I just think it's 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 such a different dynamic and it's another test for Kira Walsh. You know, she's, she's on a quest now at Barcelona. She's playing in amongst some of the world's best players, you know, and this matchup tonight against Rosavella is another example of that. And I don't, don't doubt Kira for one moment, you know, to come out on top. England in possession, leading 1-0 here on 5 Live as Stanway is almost dispossessed by Lavelle. Lavelle is deemed to have fouled her there. Well, it wasn't Lavelle v Walsh, but Lavelle almost getting the better of Stanway. And it's those positions that she picks up. She just drifts into those pockets of space. And suddenly, you don't know she's there. You look behind you, there she is. And she can steal the ball off you to devastating effect. This, this is such a good press from America or the US, and it's, a, it's such a good challenge for England to try and find the way out of it. I'd just like to see when the ball goes to Millie Bright, just step in and hit that big diagonal ball that we saw her hit so often in the Euros. It might give England more space. Ball over the top, Frank Kirby is racing to reach it down the right hand side, but it's well defended by Naomi Germer. And cleared out for an England throw. So Lucy Bronze, it will be, to take it as there are two balls on the pitch at Wembley. Just on what you said there about Millie Bright, Stephen, Alex Greenwood as well was just asking for the ball. We know her distribution. Bright's fellow centre-half, possible option for England to use to try and get the better of this USA press. But generally, they've done well with it as Lucy Bronze has it deep in US territory. Down the right-hand side, trying a bit of nifty footwork. She's well dispossessed and Haran, the captain on the night, will clear it away for the USA, but only straight to Stanway. Here is Kira Walsh, plays the ball into the area just over the head of Chloe Kelly. And Alyssa Nea will have to chase that because Kelly's chased it all the way out to the left wing and that's very, very good play from the Manchester City winger. And of course, England's Wembley heroine from the Euros just forced Nea to go and clear it out of play and England to have a throw and a desired spell of possession. Yeah, the USA centre-backs, Alana Cook in particular, was sleeping then. She just let the ball run out from the corner, uh, from the cross, sorry, and ended up the goalkeeper having to take control. Brilliant take by Lucy Bronze, right-hand side into the penalty area. It's good defending, though, by Germer, who comes across again and will prevent the corner as well, clearing the ball out off Lucy Bronze for a USA goal kick. England 1, USA 0. No, that was that ball from Millie Bright, just that little clip over to Lucy Bronze, evading the press and allowing Lucy Bronze to run in behind. It's just a, a little bit of a heavy touch, which is very unlike Lucy Bronze. When she gets in forward position, she's, almost, she's very sort of uh, very calm in those situations, but it just evaded her there. Megan Rapino again with a slightly loose pass for the USA from that left wing. And England will pick it up once more. England who lead 1-0. England who are already on the longest winning run in Lioness's history. They have won their last 14. The USA have won their last 13. In that was the CONCACAF Championship, which is their qualifying tournament continentally for the World Cup and the Olympics. But when you consider that England's winning young winning run took them to the heights of European glory in the summer, it is not something to be sniffed at as England can't keep that in. USA will have a throw left-hand side midway through the England half. So USA to take it, they'll win another throw and we can head back to QPR Reading, Sahel Sahi. Where Reading have a penalty, Vicky, Lucas Zhao was tripped, Andy Carroll steps up and he scores his first goal for Reading since he returned to the club in the summer and Reading at the moment, they're leading Queen's Park Rangers and they're going top of the championship, QPR nil, Reading 1. Thanks Sahel, here at Wembley on 5 Live, it is still England 1, USA nil, and again, just look at the records that England is setting under Serena Wiegmann. Unbeaten under the manager who led them to European glory, but they've been dispossessed here. Here is Smith, shoots slow into the corner, brilliant equaliser. And you knew that if the USA were going to get back on level terms, that Sophia Smith would be at the heart of it. England dispossessed outside their own penalty area and made to pay. It's 1-1. Yeah, it's a super finish, but it comes from a press. Stephen's already spoken about it. The strength of this USA press, it's Lindsay Horan who just goes up and presses Georgia Stanway, who's been dropping deeper alongside Kira Walsh to try and dictate play. And Georgia Stanway's just too slow on the ball. Lindsay Rand nicks it off into the path. 
of Sophia Smith, who dispatches it pretty well indeed, I must say, into the bottom corner. Yeah, but it was going to be anyone who was going to score for the USA. It was going to be Sophia Smith. It's clinical, like Izzy says, but why allow this to happen? Millie Bright playing a straight ball into midfield. Georgia Stanway getting pressed too square on with her body and it was far too easy for Lindsay Haram to pinch the ball, toe poke it into the path but the, the vision of Sophia Smith to have a little look round to see what's about first touch across her body and strikes it into the bottom left hand corner what a finish yeah just that little check of her shoulder there on the replay that we're watching here in, in the commentary box just before the ball comes to her Sophia Smith knows that she's got time to turn and swivel England in possession 1-1 one, one. How will the European champions respond to being pegged back almost immediately? Beth Mead's ball down the right-hand side. Lauren Hemp will see it go out for a corner. Just going back to the Smith goal, in instinctive. That's the word that comes to mind. The way that she guides that ball in off the post. Mary Epps might even, I think on the replay, put a touch on it, but it's so precise. She is a real talent. 22 years old. She was prolific for the USA's under-20s. And she's already prolific for their senior team. 11 goals in just 24 appearances. One to watch. England with the corner, 1-1 one, one here at Wembley. Swung in high, powerfully headed away by the USA. Oh, high boot there. England will play on. The ball bounces all the way through to Nea as it comes back in. England getting back in shape. Lucy Bronze is still down. Tell you what. If there's contact there, that's a decent shout for a penalty. The boot was high. We play on. We do have VAR. They will be checking. The USA on the counter. Here is Smith just outside the penalty area. He's just equalised for the USA. She's dispossessed. And now England will come away towards the halfway line. But they've lost possession. Sullivan has won it back from Kira Walsh and plays it to Smith once more. He goes down. Alex Greenwood waves her arm to say get up before making the tackle. USA have it back, here is Lavelle, excellent interception by Millie Bright, just leaping out of defence, stretching out that leg before it can reach Smith as the USA win possession on the halfway line. The ball's not got out of play yet, so VAR may still be checking, but certainly the Wembley crowd felt that that was a high bid on Lucy Bronze. We have now stopped play, and our referee, Reem Hussein of Germany, is coming over to have a word here. Now, what has play been stopped for here? This is an interesting one because they're, well, it's been stopped because VAR was saying, go and have a look at the screen because this might be a penalty. So they didn't wait for the ball to go out of play. They have now stopped play when the ball is in a dead area and the referee, Reem Hussein, is going over to have a look at the screen. And this could be a penalty for England here. Yeah, it could well be my initial reaction you know, live was that it was a penalty, it was a high boot on Lucy Bronze, but I don't know. Yeah, it, that's, that's the penalty, it has to be. It has to be a penalty. Is it inside the box? Yes, it is. Bronze is ducking, but she's not ducking enough. The ball is high, it makes contact from the substitute. And there is the roar that will tell you that the decision is a penalty. We thought at the time it was high on Lucy Bronze and England have the chance to retake the lead at Wembley. Yeah, it's the right decision, isn't it, Stephen? Um, Lucy Bronze has put her head a little bit low, but it's a high boot straight in the face. Alex Greenwood stepping up. Yeah, I think uh, obviously Hayley Mace has just picked up a, a yellow card for that foul as well on Lucy Bronze. But as you say, she's just put her head down the tiniest of bits but definite penalty now it was Greenwood but she's left it to Stanway and Stanway is England's first choice penalty taker Alyssa Nair saved in the semi-final in 2019 but she doesn't save there it's Georgia Stanway England's penalty queen she does it again from the spot and England retake the lead against the world champions England 2 USA 1 at Wembley yeah clinical from Georgia Stanway but you know what, that's that's really, really smart from Alex Greenwood and Georgia Stanway, whether that was pre-planned or whether it was just a, a spontaneous thing. But Alex Greenwood picked up the ball as if she was going to take it. And from a goalkeeping perspective, you think that a left foot is going to take the penalty. And then the ball's passed over at the last second. Georgia Stanway's taken it, as she did during the Euros. She dispatched it, sent the keeper the wrong way. A really good finish into the bottom corner. She goes off and celebrates with the fans and the stadium's just erupted again.
And there was getting nowhere near it, was she? Lovely penalty into the bottom right-hand corner. Um, very, very calm under the pressure. But it's come against the run of play, if I'm being completely honest. The USA have been a better team since getting that goal back. And, well, since actually England scored first, the Lionesses took the lead. The US have been a better team. But again, England have found a way. And again, it's Georgia Stanway. She scored a brace in the last match against Luxembourg. One of those was from the spot, and she has very much established herself now as England's penalty taker, a position which was really up for grabs for a few years. They really struggled from the spot, England, but they found their woman in Stanway, and they had the ball at the back, leading 2-1. Goal in the championship, Sahel Sahi. All level here now, Vicky. It's Queen's Park Rangers 1, Reading 1. The lead only lasted three minutes. A good cross from the right-hand side. And Lyndon Dykes with a superb diving header 12 yards out was a lovely header Queen's Park Rangers 1 Reading 1 thanks to Hale England 2 USA 1 at Wembley as Megan Rapino wins a free kick on this near side in terms of the ebb and flow of the game then Stephen how do England keep control of this momentum well don't don't allow the USA to come on to you and what I mean by that is when you're playing goal kicks out don't invite that press on maybe miss it out for five or ten minutes and, and make sure that you're going a little bit more direct i think the great thing that england have achieved since the euros and, and during the euros is that they know how to stay in games which is hugely important and they're coming forward again here is lucy bronze down the right hand side the white shirts are waiting in the penalty area here is beth mead forced to the edge of the box bronze has continued to run <laughs> she's run around mead in a circle there bronze giving her the real 360 degree option, but Mead in the end has gone all the way back to Alex Green. But that's a gorgeous turn by Kira Walsh on the halfway line. Georgia Stanway, England just popping it around so beautifully once more. Here is Mead, well challenged by Mace. It was a little bit short from Lucy Bronze, and the USA will clear. England 2, USA 1, 10 minutes to go until half time on five line. Yeah, it was really sloppy from Lucy Bronze there. It was a really easy path into the path, sorry, into the path of Beth Mead. They got the num numerical overload down this right-hand side and Beth Mead, the pass just into the space would have put Beth Mead through either on goal or for an easy cross across the six-yard line. But really good spell of possession from England in general. I think that's where they really excelled in the Euros was that build-up play. You know, when they counter-attack, if it's not on to go forward, they come back, they build, they get numbers around the ball, they find the numerical... Uh, Superior, superiority sorry, on the other side of the pitch and they find it, they play and they expose fullbacks. But this woman almost dangerous when she gets on the ball. Sophia Smith bearing down on the penalty area, pulls it across, left by Rapino and it's steered home by Trinity Rodman. It's 2-2 at Wembley. It's a lovely flowing counter-attack move from the USA and we are all square once again. England 2, USA 2. Now this is a goal of the highest quality but it's trouble for England because they find themselves in a 2v2 situation at the back. Millie Bright and Alex Greenwood find themselves they, uh, occupied by the two centre forwards but there's also the runner from midfield who's Trinity Rodman who just ghosts in at the back post lovely little over by Rapino who knows exactly what's behind her England outnumbered brilliant from the USA and that's physicality that we're speaking about pre-match that run from Trinity Rodman it's a long busting run from midfield deep midfield and you know they're talking about experience Megan Rapino. she takes Lucy Bronze to the front post Lucy Bronze gets distracted by and Megan Rapino just leaves the ball into the path of Trinity Rodman for that third woman run slots it past her sends her the wrong way and as like Steve has said it's a hugely it's a huge goal of the highest quality for, for the USA but is it onside we've not kicked off yet England stands, waiting to do so. Our referee, Reem Hussein, is waiting for the confirmation from VAR. We've already seen VAR awarding a penalty. Checking for potential offside leading up to goal. That is what has come up on the screen now. And you have to say, in the moment, there wasn't anything that stood out. Rosa Vell's come over to have a word with Reem Hussain and saying, you know, what is what is the hold up here? Clearly VAR has spotted something. Very optimistic fan tries to start a Mexican wave in front of us, but everyone's focused. Everyone wants to know, is this US equaliser 
going to be ruled out. And I think they're looking at several phases here, is he potentially several lines? Well, and is, is this about, and it can't be about whether I think that player... It's, I think it's, they're looking at Sophia Smith right over on the far side, on yeah. The, the blind side of Millie Bright. She looks on side by the TV pictures that we're seeing on the monitor here, but it's obviously no. being the equaliser for the USA ruled out and Vlatko Andonovski will be so frustrated with that because it was a gorgeous goal but after a very long VAR check England are reprieved offside and it remains England 2 USA 1 that's a night of VAR isn't it two big decisions within the game both go in England's favour the penalty that they get and then the offside against the USA I have to say from like Izzy says the camera picture or the pictures on the TV screen that we had in front of us it didn't look like it was offside but it's to be in the finest of margins so England still leading here at Wembley coming forward now Beth Mead with the little drag back to Lucy Bronze doesn't quite come off and Lindsay Horan will pick it up for the USA who may be nursing a sense of injustice but we have to say with VAR when it's offside I mean, people can dislike them but the lines are drawn accurately and they've clearly seen something there that looked tight but has gone the way of England rather than the USA here on BBC Radio 5 Live six minutes plus added time to play in this first half and as England knock it around at the back we have to say it's been a cracking match is it yeah it's been a very eventful first half really exciting you know for the fans and transitional no team has really got hold of the ball for a long periods of time and kept possession it's been both teams really hungry to win the game and you know this is exactly what these 90,000 people inside the stadium want to see it's exciting it's transitional big decisions being made and you know this is a real spectacle good defending again by the USA center half Naomi Germer coming across at the expense of an England throw midway through the USA half, lovely little touch back by Lucy Bronze to Georgia Stanway, who scored the penalty that gives England this 2-1 lead. Out to the left-hand side, and Chloe Kelly. Haven't seen too much of her, and I'm sure Wembley will forgive her based on her last performance here. Stanway now picks it up, goes for goal, well blocked by Germer. Stanway will go again out to the right hand side. Lucy Bronze, right hand side of the box, pulls it across. Deflection help behind at the far post. And Stephen Warnock, from your angle, did you think that was going in or was oh, it the I run? Did. No, <laughs> I just thought for a corner. it's one of those moments as a, as a fullback and you're thinking, <laughs> oh, I'm not so sure where this is going to go. It was actually Andy Sullivan who gets caught in the, the right back position and you don't know what's behind you because you can't open your body up because of the deflection. And she dealt with it extremely well just to put it round the, uh, the post for a corner. So corner to England who lead by two goals to one on five live. The USA having that sweeping counter-attack equaliser. Their second equaliser of the night ruled out for offside after a VAR check. England corner swung into the crowded six-yard box. The header is a cross goal. Lucy Bronze back in. The USA get contact just inside the penalty area. Sophia Smith will clear the ball away. But England will pick it up once more. Kira Walsh inside the centre circle. You have to say, the set-piece defending from both sides has been a bit hearts and mouths at times this evening. Yeah, or just really good deliveries, you know, into really key areas. That ball in from, from Beth Mead, right on top of the goalkeeper into that area where it's not necessarily the first ball, but the second ball that you get, that you win and head it back in to the six-yard box. From Lucy Bronze caused a lot of problems. Brilliant crossfield ball from Rachel Daly out to the right hand side and you win a throw. Talk about regular action and playing for your WSL clubs. Rachel Daly's an interesting case. She will play regularly for Aston Villa. The ball goes out of play for a USA throw deep in their own territory. She'll be a star player for them this season. It will be as a forward. Now, she largely played as a forward for Houston Dash when she was selected for England at the Euros. She started every match at left back. How long do you keep playing somebody in a different position to national team compared with domestic team? As he's thoughts on that at the moment as the USA just win the ball outside their own penalty area. Well read by Millie Bright ahead of Smith though on the halfway line. And here come England once more. Frank Kirby just outside the box still going. Kirby pulls it back. Here is Lauren Hemp. Left hand side of the penalty area forced out again. It's good shepherding, good marshalling from the USA, the world champions. Trailing by two goals to one against England. 
the European champions who have the ball in the centre circle. And now here is Rachel Daly, and I can bring you in, Izzy. <laughs> no, I, I think that I've known Rachel a long time, played with her at England youth levels, and I've actually never seen her in an identified position. So I think to to answer your question, Vicky, I think that you know she, she's done a really good job at left back for England. She's doing a brilliant job so far this season. You know, in that number number nine role for Aston Villa, and I, I just think that you know doesn't necessarily have to be defined. I think it's one of those where. You know, she does a job for a team. She's got so many physical attributes as well that after playing in America, especially, she knows the game inside out. And yeah, I just think she's an asset to any team, wherever she plays. USA goal kick up towards the halfway line, England to USA one. I think the the interesting case with Rachel Daly is, is that she started the tournament, but often Alex Greenwood was bought in when she was struggling. So maybe that, I think it'll go with form as well in the WSL as well to see how, uh, how, how often she plays at left back. England in possession, just outside the penalty area, almost broke kindly inside the box as Walsh played it for. But here goes Sophia Smith, Millie Bright's pulled her back there clearly, then brought her down there clearly. And that is the clearest yellow card. Well, it took her about a second to whip that out, didn't it, Reem Hussein? But it was coming all day long, and Millie Bright will take that all day long. Yeah, it's an important challenge from Millie Bright. She had to make it because Sophia Smith, who's looked the brightest back on the pitch tonight so far, it just turned Millie Bright inside out and she's got away from her and the counter-attack was on for the USA. So Millie Bright had to do something. It's one of those where the manager says if the press doesn't work, you know, foul them before it becomes a problem. The problem is now Sophia Smith just goes and stands on Millie Bright yeah. and Millie Bright's walking a tightrope now. Yeah. Well, she was sent off Millie Bright's two yellow cards in the semi-final against the USA. As Rose Lavelle picks it up midway through the... England's half sends it out to the left-hand side looking for Megan Rapino, who reaches that. The 37-year-old kicks it in down by the corner flag, pulls it back to Sophia Smith. England 2, USA 1. Sophia Smith will go for goal again, straight into the head of Millie Bright. Andy Sullivan will win the header just outside the penalty area. Cleared away now by Lucy Bronze. USA will help it back in, but it's just ahead of Rapino and rolls out for a goal kick into three minutes of added time at the end of this first half. England 2. USA won. Just sorry, going back to that Rachel Daly discussion, she's not the profile of a number nine that Serena Wigman would play either, which I think, I mean, I saw a lot of stuff, you know, in the media leading up to this game this week with, with Alessia Russo pulling out of the squad, who's going to play that nine role? And I think people are saying Rachel Daly because she's playing in the nine for Aston Villa, but actually, you look at her, her attributes as a player, she doesn't fit into a nine that Serena Wigman would play in that role and I think that's why she's gone with Lauren Hemp into that false nine for purely ball retention purposes. Mary Earps just taking her time over this goal kick, sends it up towards the halfway line. Haran will win the header for the USA, who trail by two goals to one. Bright sends it forward and here is Lauren Hemp. Lauren Hemp could be in behind here. Lauren Hemp goes for goal, it's tame in the end, it's straight at Naya. And again, you have to praise Naomi Germer, the 22-year-old centre-half who just got back and kept pace with Lauren Hemp, which is no mean feat and just did enough to make her take the shot early and it was tame in the end as the ball spins out of play for an England throw midway through their own half. Back to QPR Reading, Sahail Sahi. Yeah, half time here, Vicky. Queen's Park Rangers won, Reading won. It took a while to warm up this top of the table battle, but Lucas Zhao got fouled in the penalty area. Reading through Andy Carroll, opened the lead from the penalty spot. The lead only lasted three minutes. Osman Kaikai, he whipped in across for Lyndon Dykes to equalise. Half time, QPR won, Reading won. Thanks, Sahail. Decision has gone against England here for handball. Interesting one. Looks as though it might have hit the hand of Hemp and Germa at the same time. And initially, Lauren Hemp thought that would be a brilliant opportunity, perhaps to get Germa booked and to have a free kick on the right-hand side. But the decision has gone against England. And the USA get us underway. Poor ball, though, straight out of play for an England throw. England two, USA one. How would you assess the balance of play since that USA goal was ruled out? I think it's gone flat. I think it's took the stuffing out of the USA a little bit. I think England have managed the, the game a little bit better, but um, this is a very, very good USA team. An important period here for England in stoppage time. And the decision has gone against Lucy Bronze there, up against Megan Rapino, and that's a free kick really the bronze could have done without giving away good position level with the edge of the six yard box on the wide left because Rapino wasn't really going anywhere no, it's a 
a bit silly from Lisa Bronze, I must admit. That she's, yeah, like you say, Vicky, she was running away. You know, she was almost going to struggle to keep the ball in play. Um, and yeah, and just right on the stroke at half time, somebody of Megan Rapino's dead ball ability off this free kick, whipping it in from this left hand side into the area of Mary Earps, I predict, putting her team under a little bit of pressure there, Lucy Bronze. This will be the last action of this first half. Can England go in ahead at the break? Megan Rapino will have her say. She whips it in, and the header is over the bar. It's out for a goal kick. And we're in the final seconds now. England 2, USA 1. Yeah, Lindsay Horan actually got to the ball first and Millie Bright, but I think Millie Bright, really good defending actually, because she got her body in the way to stop Lindsay Horan generating any sort of power or direction onto that. Yeah, half time. There we go, Mary Earps took so long that the referee just gave up and said, right, we won't take the goal kick, we'll just have half time. And the cheers around Wembley will tell you that England lead the USA. They lead by two goals to one. And Stephen Warnock, it has been a very entertaining first half. It has. A, a start that England could have been behind very early on in the game, um, in the first minute or so, and then grew into the game beat the press, got in, got a goal, and then we saw the qualities of USA, and when they came back into the game, and then they started to, to show what they're about, coming here, putting in a in a good performance, and VAR with, with two huge decisions, both in the Lionesses' favours. I think it's just been a really exciting game, you know, for the fans especially, I think, coaches, I said it early on, both coaches, probably, you know, more stuff that they're not happy with rather than happy with, they're being really critical, but... I think on the balance there's been some really good play from both sides. Um, but yeah, I think probably too transitional for either coach. Perhaps USA favour the transition game a little bit more than Serena Wiegmann in England because um, she likes to have control of the game. But yeah, there's been some really key moments, a really good game so far. So Lauren Hemper was who gave England the early lead. Sophia Smith, who's been outstanding for the USA, finding the equaliser. Stanway from the spot after a VAR review. But England 2-1 up. Rodman thought she'd equalise for the USA. Brilliant counter-attack, but ruled out by VAR for offside. Kelly Summers, it's all yours. What's a first half? We gave it the big one beforehand, didn't we? Saying two of the best teams in the world facing off. We're going to learn a lot about them. Izzy, ignore what you said about the managers not liking a lot of what they saw in the first half. We loved it, didn't we? Well, yeah, no, it was great to watch. I think, I don't know why, but I think like a coach sometimes because of the amount of work that we do on the training pitch. <laughs> you don't need to excuse yourself. I know, well. I know, but no, I think it's been superb. Um, you know, like I said, some really good goals. VAR getting involved, of course. We couldn't go a night without VAR, could we? Um, but no, some really good bits of play from England. And, you know, the key thing, the key question for the game is can they pick off, pick up the way that, where they left off with the Euros? And so far, what I've seen tonight, they have. Have you noticed a change in the way England have approached this game against the USA to the way they've approached previous games against the USA? Have you noticed that change in stature of these Lionesses? Well, I think there's a belief, isn't there? I think there was almost a, a feeling around the US that they were in, invincible at times with, with the way that they played. And now it's it's almost the opposite way round. It feels like the Lionesses have got that, that feeling, that stature about them now. And you can, uh, you can see the respect that both teams have for each other. I think what we're seeing that this is a huge challenge for the Lionesses. They're such a well-organised team. The way I looked at it, I was looking at it just before the end of the game. With Germer and Cook at the back, they're so, they're so quick and athletic that they can go 2v2 at the back and they can press high. They allow that to happen. So they squeeze the pitch really well. This will be Serena. Serena Wiegmann will be delighted. Whatever the outcome of, of this game is, this is such a great training exercise to understand the level that they're going to have to get to to win this World Cup. And I know that this is a friendly, but we said, didn't we, before this match, Kelly, that it's, it's not a friendly friendly. It's not an unfriendly friendly, but it, it, it's, <laughs> it's a match that both sides, with less than a year to go until the World Cup, knowing that each other are going to be huge rivals at this, that this tournament next summer, that they're taking incredibly seriously. And I think the thing that stands out for me, having, having been in France to commentate on the World Cup semi-final back in 2019, England had their moments, of course they did, in that match. Steph Orton having that late penalty saved. But there was just this sense that the USA had two, three gears to go up. I don't think there is two, three gears difference now between England and the USA. Well, very much looking forward to the second half. More of the same, please, from both of these sides. And we'll have commentary at that to come for you very shortly. But now let's get the Five Lies news with Juliano Cassidy. 
Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. A government minister has been sacked after being accused of serious misconduct. Conservative MP Connor Burns has also had the party whip removed while an investigation's carried out. Mr Burns has tweeted that his party had rushed to judgment. A man carrying a knife has been shot dead by armed officers at a police station in Derby. The man who hasn't been identified had reportedly broken into a secure car park. A number of people are being treated in hospital following an explosion in County Donegal. Police, firefighters and paramedics attended the service station. Eyewitnesses say tractors are being used to remove the rubble. And Liverpool have beaten Glasgow to act as host of the Eurovision Song Contest. The UK is hosting the competition after organisers decided it couldn't be held in the winning country, Ukraine. Tonight, sorted. You don't work with me. You work for me. You don't have to like someone for them to be useful to you. All new on BBC iPlayer. The bit that makes sense about this job is living it. Watch Industry on BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live Sport. Our second half commentary of England versus the USA to come, where it is currently 2-1 to Serena Wiegmann's side. If you missed the first half, don't go anywhere for the second half because it has been fantastic here at Wembley Stadium. There's also International Rugby League taking place this evening. England are playing Fiji in a warm-up game before the World Cup starts next weekend. Let's get the latest from Matt Newsom. Yeah, England 46, Fiji nil. They've taken the opportunity, Sean Wade's side, to rest a few players, get them re ready for next weekend's opener against Samoa. It's been one-way traffic, Fiji look a little bit rattled, and it's, uh, it looks as though a positive start and positive finish, should I say, to the uh, pre preparations for England in the World Cup. England 46, Fiji nil. Good news, thank you, Matt. We're going to switch codes now to Rugby Union, and in the Gallagher Premiership, it's currently Bristol 7, Exeter Chiefs 17. And don't forget, the Women's World Cup starts in New Zealand tomorrow morning. We'll have live commentary of England's opening game against Fiji from 4.30am right here on 5 Live. And if, unlike me, you like early starts, you can hear qualifying from the Japanese Grand Prix. That's on Sports Extra from 7 tomorrow morning. Earlier, George Russell led a Mercedes 1-2 ahead of Lewis Hamilton in second practice. Now, though, some distressing news are coming out of Argentina last night. At least one person died after police fired tear gas at fans outside a match between Gymnasia and Boca Juniors. The game was called off after just nine minutes with fans spilling onto the pitch trying to escape the packed stadium. South American football expert Tim Vickery is here to tell us more. Tim, what more do we now know about this? Well, this was a game that was too big for the organisation and the stadium in which it took place. Gymnasia, their only previous title win was in 1929. They might win the title this year. Boca are the big draw. Two teams that have a connection with Diego Maradona. So it was a huge occasion. It was one of those games where you've got to be there. And uh, the stadium, it seems, there were 10,000 outside the stadium unable to get in when the gates were closed. Many of them with tickets in their hands. The police had closed the gates. The club Hymnasius say that that happened prematurely, but the police had a public order problem outside and they clearly exaggerated. Tear gas all over the place, rubber bullets uh, being fired. Uh, and uh, that tear gas outside the stadium, it then drifted into the stadium, forced the game to be halted and there was real, real risk of panic inside the stadium. As we watch the TV images, everyone one is thinking Indonesia uh, and I think probably we got off lightly. The only death as a result of, of a heart attack in all of the confusion, a few in hospital, it could have been far, far worse because the basic truth about football, no visiting fans in Argentina, so no visiting fans in the stadium. They couldn't even organise this with, uh, with just fans of one team. But the basic truth of football is just so many people in, in the same space without fan violence is in itself potential threat to their safety it's unusual as well isn't it to hear comments from a referee but he's actually spoken out on this too 
Well, I mean, everyone was absolutely terrified. And and, and the players uh, and the referee, I mean, the, the, the players, they've got their, their, their relatives in the stands. They're worried about what's happening there. Uh, and you saw there a stadium that wasn't prepared to evacuate people. In the end, they managed to get people out onto the pitch and some of them going down the steps to get out, going down the steps used by the players uh, and uh, there are, there's a there's a political tug of war going on at the moment for blame between the club who deny of doing anything wrong and the police operation and the police operation was clearly a disaster and some involved in that have already been suspended but this city la plata and our outside buenos aires it has a big municipal stadium with a far bigger capacity uh, than the stadium used last night. Had the game been played there, common sense would have prevailed and we wouldn't be talking uh, about this near tragedy last night. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Really distressing scenes out there in Argentina. Back now to the Premier League, though, and there's been a lot of talk about Steve Cooper's position at Nottingham Forest this week. After a fifth defeat in a row for the Premier League's bottom side at Leicester on Monday, he said his side aren't a team. Today, he has signed a contract extension until 2025. Ellie Mollison is a Forest fan and joins us now. Ellie, I've got to be honest, this news was a huge surprise to me and many neutrals. What about to you as a Forest fan? As a Forest fan, I was surprised, not because I think it's undeserved, but because of all the talk that was going on around Steve Cooper's position in the club. We were seeing all sorts of headlines of who might take his place before anything had even happened. And I'm just so happy to know that that contract has been extended. Yeah, it did feel like from a lot of Forest fans I was speaking to, they wanted him to stay. But does it feel like it's a little bit premature? What happens if he does lose the next few games if Forest don't pick up results? I think for me, regardless of position, I still want Steve Cooper to stay. And I think that's the feeling of a lot of fans. And this is not just sentimental value. This is not just because what he did for us as a club. It's because if you look at our managerial record, in the last 10 years, we've had more than one manager a year. And that's ridiculous. And he's been given a job that I don't think any manager would find particularly easy. Losing most of the players that got us up in the first place and then signing 21 to 22 new players that was necessary to have them all gel. I think for me, I'm glad to see it. Some sort of stability and some belief in Steve Cooper because in Cooper we trust. <laughs> I imagine you used the word stability then actually. There is a need to just have some stability after over 20 signings coming in in the summer. Do you feel like he is the right man to turn it around? Can he keep you in the Premier League? If there's anyone who can do it, it's Steve <laughs> Cooper. If there's any living man, obviously other than Brian Clough, it's Steve Cooper. If we look at the position we were in this time last year, before Cooper came in, we were bottom of the championship. I mean, at least now we're bottom of the Premier League. That's <laughs> certainly something. And he turned it around in less than a season. He can turn it around again. He's been given a very, very difficult job here with all those new signings gelling. But if there's one man I trust to do the job, it's Steve Cooper. Ellie, thank you so much for joining us on Five Live Sport. I love to hear that positivity after a difficult few weeks for Nottingham Forest. A reminder, if you did miss it, Steve Cooper signing a new contract with Nottingham Forest earlier today, despite there being a lot of speculation about his future. A reminder, though, we are here at Five Live Sport coming live from Wembley Stadium tonight. England taking on the USA in a friendly, their first time back at Wembley Stadium since lifting the Euros trophy back at the end of July. You might be able to hear that Shania Twain, man, I feel like a woman, is playing brilliant tune, firstly. But that is because a lot of the former Lionesses have been invited here to Wembley today as part of a celebration of 50 years of the England's women's senior team. They're dancing as they're being paraded around the pitch, getting a round of applause from the sellout crowd inside Wembley Stadium, who have certainly been treated to a brilliant first half so far. Stephen Warnock is alongside me, as is Izzy Christiansen. Stephen Warnock's been busting out the moves, but he's actually just been videoing our reporter, Juliet Ferrington, who's been doing some brilliant dance moves over my shoulder. Unbelievable. Always entertaining, Juliet Ferrington. Every ground they go to, <laughs> loves the music at half-time, loves dancing. 
always puts a smile on my face. I feel a bit mean calling, calling out Jules on air for that. I thought the dance moves were great, but it's all fitting of what is a brilliant occasion. We had a brilliant first half, and the half-time entertainment's been brilliant as well, Izzy. Yeah, the, the pre-match entertainment's fantastic. The first 45's fantastic. Half-time entertainment. I was bopping along in the studio while Stephen was filming Juliet. I'm just glad the camera was facing to my right, <laughs> away from me, so I could do what I wanted behind. But um, no, it's been a great occasion so far, and I just hope the second half lives up to the first because, like I said, you know, a number of occasions it's been it's been really entertaining. It was a pulsating first half. If you're at home, if you're in your car, wherever you are, do not go anywhere because the second half of England versus the USA is about to get underway, and we are hoping for more of the same. Time to hand you back to your commentary team: Izzy Christensen, Stephen Warnock, and Vicky Sparks. Thanks, Kelly. Yes, both sets of players out on the pitch. England in there. All white kit, the USA, all in dark blue. England, who lead by two goals to one at half time. And if you were Serena Wiegmann, Izzy Christensen, what would you have said to your Lionesses group? I'd say, on the whole, more of the same. You know, they've been really good, especially down this right hand side, getting forward, finding the overloads. Um, Georgia Stanway, Lucy Bronze, Beth Mead combining with Lauren Hemp. But I'd say, like Stephen said, sometimes, you know, there's no shame when USA are pressing you. There's no shame in just, you know, going along, picking out that diag, like Stephen said, you know, Millie Bright doing that diag that we so often saw during the summer. There's no shame in, in not beating the press by playing out. It's it's OK to go along at times just to relieve that pressure and, you know, get up the park that way. Yeah, I, I think one thing I'd like to be if I was a Lioness player or a, as a fan, don't be predictable. We almost seem to be going down the right side too much. Is that because Rachel Daly is right-footed? She likes to come inside. It's not natural for her to, to find that wide player in Chloe Kelly on the left-hand side. Well, we will see in the second half what Serena Wiegmann's charges can do. The European champions, England, lead the USA, the world champions, by two goals to one. No changes at half-time. The USA forced into a change in the first half. Hayley Mace coming on the injured Emily Fox and the USA win a throw deep in their own territory playing from left to right England will pick that up through Millie Bright who sends it all the way back to the established number one of Manchester United as well Mary Earps in goal the back four for England of Lucy Bronze Millie Bright the captain this evening with Leah Williamson out injured Alex Greenwood and Rachel Daly ahead of them it's Georgia Stanway whose penalty is the difference in this 2-1 lead for England and Kira Walsh Chloe Kelly, Frank Kirby and Beth Mead supporting Lauren Hemp who got things underway up front. England still a possession inside their own penalty area. Alyssa Nea in goal for the USA. Sophia Huerta, Naomi Germa, Alana Cook and Hayley Mace now the back four. Ahead of them it's Andy Sullivan, Lindsay Horan, the captain on the night and Rose Novell. It's Sophia Smith who has scored what was the equaliser for the USA before Stanway's penalty. Megan Rapino and Trinity Rodman, who thought the daughter of Dennis Rodman, the NBA star, that she had levelled things up again for the USA were it not for a very marginal offside given by VAR. Lavelle can't latch onto it outside the England penalty area and Daly will have it. Sends it back to Millie Bright, who clears long downfield. Again, England trying to find ways to play out of this high USA press. Won't be kept in by Lauren Hemp and she can't get the deflection of Cook either. And it's a throw to the USA just inside the England half, England to USA 1. Yeah, and like Stephen was saying with that USA press, England have to find different ways to get out, not be predictable as he said, but also what I've noticed so far in this half is Kira Walsh is actually dropping out onto this left-hand side into what we call a false fullback position where a midfielder drops out. This is lovely play by the USA though, inside the penalty area goes Smith, found by Lavelle and she drags it just wide of the far post. If that was on target, Mary Earps she wasn't getting there. Yeah, I can come back to that point about Kira Walsh coming out, but that's another really big chance early on in this half for, for the USA. They started the first half with a big chance, and that's another one for Sophia Smith. Late challenge there as Rachel Daly goes down. We're going to have a free kick, and it is a yellow card for Trinity Rodman. She becomes the third player, second for the USA to go into the book this evening and England have a set piece on this wide left hand side and this is not a good challenge Stephen Warnock by Rodman no it's it's not it's it's ever ever so slightly late it's actually not her a sliding leg that that commits the foul it's a 
a follow through leg that catches the ankle of uh, Rachel Daly. But what I would say is that I just hope there's not too many changes in this game and I don't expect there to be. The reason being is I think both managers psychologically will want to get the victory leading into the World Cup and I think that's a huge thing to have for the players. England in possession with Kira Walsh giving away. Sophia Huerta will pick it up for the USA and send it all the way back to Naomi Gurma under pressure. Plays the ball out of play for an England throw. England two, USA one, three and a half minutes gone. And that's it, isn't it, Izzy? What Stephen said there. Yes, both managers want to win, but, but they're treating it as a competitive game in terms, you would think, of how many changes you do make. They can make six. They only get three opportunities to make those during the game but this could well be a matchup in the semi-finals the final of the world cup next summer and it's potentially being treated as such england breaking forwards down the right hand side here is beth mead flag goes up england's can't latch onto it in the penalty area anyway in the offside flag up against beth mead very deservedly crowned england player of the year this week is he i mean she, she's just going from strength to strength yeah, she is, and she's, um, you know, she's a player who, she, she's always been really talented, and I, I think my, my view on it is that she's, you know, she's worked under some really good managers, but I think she's working under an impeccably good manager at club and country at the moment in Jonas Eideval and Serena Wiegmann, and I think from that they've both, in their own rights, managed to perfect her game to where she is now, and we're seeing a player who's, you know, not just incredibly talented but she's free on the football pitch and she's playing some really good stuff USA really putting the pressure on again and England play through it very well storming forward now is Grant Kirby midway through the USA half England 2 USA 1 here on 5 Live out to the left hand side and Chloe Kelly plays the ball in right footer to Naya kept her eyes right on that it's good goalkeeping but Lauren Hemp wasn't too far away from making contact in the middle as USA get things moving quickly up towards Rapino she's dispossessed and England will have it once more with Kira Walsh on the halfway line yeah she's been quite quiet hasn't she Chloe Kelly I haven't really seen her in the game that much but coming to life again now coming down the left hand side Chloe Kelly in field to Lauren Hem pulls it back to Rachel Daly midway through the USA half left hand side England leading by two goals to one in seven of the last eight meetings this encounter between England and the USA has been decided by one goal or fewer. Some draws in there as well. It has been close over the last few years. A marker of how England have caught up to some degree over the last few years with the most successful national side in women's footballing history. And they will hope that that gap is growing ever smaller. And on the evidence of tonight, England leading 2-1 and in possession with Mary Earps just outside her own penalty area. That is what we're seeing. It's one of those that if, if they were to meet the USA at any stage in the World Cup next year, they will go into that match with more belief than they've ever had before. Being European champions as Lucy Bronze picks up the ball in space but the whistle is already gone. And it will be a free kick to the USA just inside their own half. Just going back to Beth Mead and the connection that she has with Serena Wiegmann as well as Jonas Eideval at Arsenal. Since Serena Wiegmann took charge of England, no player has scored more goals, 21 of them, provided more assists, 17, and created more goal-scoring chances, 81, than Beth Mead. I mean, the numbers are just outstanding. They are. The You've got to play in order to get those numbers. And I think it, it works like a staircase, with you, if you like. Her, her work at Arsenal is, you know, day in, day out. And that's what gets her to this stage. And she performs when she goes on to an England camp. And then she obviously performs in big matches. And we've seen that with Beth Mead over the last few years, in particular in the WSL. She, she shows up in big games. She scored at the Emirates. Every time Arsenal played at the Emirates, you know, not just, you know, tappings, you know, big goals. So she's a player who thrives on a big occasion as well. But, you know, it's a bread and butter at your club and, and that's what, how it should be. And now the game is moving towards that stage where we spoke about it in the first half, Vicky, that, you know, you've got to be performing for your club to get a call up. The big cheer you heard was for Megan Rapinoe, not keeping that ball in for the USA. And England are in possession with Kira Walsh. England leading by two goals to one. 
eight minutes gone in the second half here at Wembley. Here goes Lauren Hemp, head down, plays it out to the left-hand side, and Chloe Kelly, the white shirts, are streaming forward. Chloe Kelly goes for goal, curls it wide. Naya had it covered. So much better from the Lionesses. They're actually now taking the ball under pressure. They're accepting it when it's coming in off the, the back players that they're going to have to move the ball, not be static when they're receiving it as well. And when they beat the press of the USA, which is an extremely good press, it's allowing the gaps between midfield and defence to be big. And Chloe Kelly finding herself in a good position there, trying to dip in on her right foot and bend it into that far corner, but just not setting it out enough to bring it back in. It's been better from the Lionesses to beat the press. You know, they can't they, they can't deal with Kira Walsh. They can't deal with she's She's dropping either side of Rose Lavelle. She's getting the ball on the half turn and she's dictating play. And sometimes she comes to life, you know, not in the first 45, but in the second half because she's marked out the game for 45. She puts you to a test to say, come on, stay with me the whole game, I dare you. She does that. The player switches off his marker and then she starts to play. And that's why England are having a, a good spell of possession at the moment. England 2, USA 1, throw on this near side will bounce off Chloe Kelly via Trinity Rodman and we'll have an England throw which Rachel Daly will take Chloe Kelly just growing into this game in this second half and you can't be here at Wembley but think about that iconic celebration shirt off whirling it around her head a nod of course to USA legend Brandy Chastain as Mary Earps has to race back and control that inside her penalty area plays it out to the left hand side and Daly will head it on into midfield run back by the USA here is Rodman forced down towards the halfway line and will be picked up now by Lauren Hemp gets the better of Kirk Hemp bearing down on the penalty area left hand side of the box can she square it she tries to it'll come to Kirby and Kirby leaves it for bronze and it's the side netting and the stand in front of us thought from that angle that Lucy Bronze had smashed that into the far corner. But it's side netting and it is still England 2, USA 1. Yeah, it's really good play from Lauren Hemp. She almost chased down a lost ball, didn't she, Stephen? Then Alana Cook came in tight against her and she nicks it off her and sprints away from her. And again, we're talking about that physicality. There's no disparity anymore. Hempo's level and she's taken away from Alana Cook. And Lucy Bronze is the one that comes on late late run with a fierce strike across goal doesn't quite execute it it's so unfortunate isn't it but what we're seeing from the front three now is we're seeing rotation beth mead was in at the back post knowing that lauren hemp was down the left hand side and then he's seeing that taking the defender across the front post allowing that back post run from lucy bronze just the execution wasn't there but it's good play again sophia huerta at the other end sends a cross in that floats all the way behind Mary Elps will take this goal kick. Yes, the, the way she struck it, it reminded me of that absolute worldie she scored against Norway back in the World Cup back in 2015. But that one hit the top corner. This one hit the side netting. And we play on England 2, USA 1 here on 5 Live. Rodman's won it back, plays it just ahead of Sophia Smith, cleared away by Millie Bright. Rachel Daly will help it on. Frank Kirby can't latch onto it. Sent in by Sullivan. Bronze wins the header ahead of Rapino, who will collect it over on the left hand side. Play back now to Mace. And Rapino once more sends the ball in. Great delivery just over the head of Rose Lavelle. England get first contact on it. And Sophia Smith can't bring it under her control on the edge of the box. And England can counter. Leading by two goals to one here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Here is Kira Walsh. Well, Send it back to Millie Bright. Rapino went and then retreated. And Alex Greenwood will play it to Mary Earps. And again, England's happy just to knock the ball around their own penalty area. But Sophia Smith always sense the danger. And tries to put a bit of pressure on that England back line inside their own box. They play it up to halfway, but they've lost it now. Here is Haran getting past Georgia Stanway. Haran lifts the ball in and the nicked interception just before it can reach Rapino. fortunately for England spins into the arms of Mary Earps off Millie Bright yeah England just starting to lose a little bit of their grip with the possession I think it was Chloe Kelly giving the ball away you know in her own half leading to that Lindsay Horan driving run creating that chance for Rapino. a couple of little spells now for the USA starting to get their way back into it you come England though still leading by two goals to one We'll pull back to Chloe Kelly and now Rachel Daly just inside the USA half. Here is Chloe Kelly turning.
to find Frank Kirby. Exchanges passes with Kira Walsh. It's all very neat. It's all very tidy from England. That wasn't, though. Kirby straight to Rapino. Comes over the halfway line now. Very good stepping up from Alex Greenwood to dispossess Sophia Smith. And they're just starting to get tight to Smith, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And I'm actually wondering, Vicky, whether Smith is actually getting a little bit fatigued because she's done so much pressing. She's been pressing two centre-backs for the whole game. She almost had the opportunity to be in there, but Rose Lavelle delayed the pass and England have won it back. Here is Lauren Him, left-hand side, being pursued by Huerta. And then he's crowded out of it, the challenge by Sullivan, and the ball spins out of play for an England throw. Full-time, England against Fiji, and they're friendly ahead of the World Cup. Matt Newsom. Yeah, England 50, Fiji nil. So Sean Wayne's side march on to their World Cup opener against Samoa next weekend with a convincing nine-try win. The most important thing, I guess, will be the combinations that were forged tonight. Dom Young looked excellent on his debut. Victor Radley and Herbie Farmworth also making good impressions. Likewise, Andy Ackers. Uh, it'll be a much tougher next weekend against Samoa, though. But won this one England 50 Fiji nil England in possession here leading by two goals to one against the USA in this women's international friendly at Wembley just outside their own penalty area Lily Bright will play it forward it's a loose ball though and Haram will pick it up and now Rapino Haram wants more the two World Cup winners exchanging passes but England do well to keep the press up just trying to keep the USA at bay the world champions the USA the most successful side in the women's game internationally. Four-time World Cup winners, four-time Olympic gold medalists, but trailing here. What can Rodman do about that? Sends the ball into the area, spins away from the Val, will come out on the left-hand side. Lucy Bronze is there defending. Ball is pulled back by Haran to Megan Rapino, and now Hayley Mace will take it forward, plays it straight into the referee, but position has changed, possession has changed, so it will Go back to the USA. Let's head to the championship. QPR Reading, Sahel Sahi. 65 minutes plays. Queen's Park Rangers 1, Reading 1. It's turning into a raucous night here in West London. And Queen's Park Rangers have been on top at the start of this second half. Ilias Chair twice being denied by two good saves from the Reading goalkeeper. Queen's Park Rangers 1, Reading 1. Here come the USA down the left-hand side. Rapino into the area. Goes for goal. Deflected by Bright behind for the corner England 2 USA 1 yeah it's really good play from the USA Rose Lavelle dictating you know taking taking in a bit of disguise on the pass into Haran who's then also done a bit of a disguise herself she's faked to cross it and just rolled it into the path of Megan Rapino, who in that position coming in off the left is so dangerous corner for the USA and corner to be taken by 37 year old double World Cup winner Megan Rapino, blue shirts waiting around the penalty spot, the white shirts of England back there defending. Rapino swings it in right footed, it's looping, it's pulled back across by Cook, who was making the run at the far post, but straight into that wall of white shirts, and England will clear away. Collected by Rose Lavelle, right hand side, midway through the England half. England leading by two goals to one against the USA side, who are unbeaten in their last 21 games. They've not lost since the Olympic semi final to Canada back in August 2021. Mary Earps out to the left-hand side and Rachel Daly will collect for England, the European champions against the world champions. And with a World Cup in Australia and New Zealand less than a year away, this lays down a marker, whichever side comes out on top. Two sides that could well meet in the final next summer, depending on the draw, depending on performance. We wait to see. Ball goes out of play. England throw over on the right-hand side. Crystal Dunn coming on, Vicky. I think, I hope I'm right in saying her first appearance for the national team. Yep, since she gave birth she gave to birth. her son back in mid-May. She's made a few substitute appearances in the NWSL. She is on. Andy Sullivan and Sophia Puerta are off. Crystal Dunn is joined by Sam Coffey. So a double change for the USA and a sense that they're trying to inject a, a bit of purpose, a bit of presence, a bit more, I should say, because they have been the better side in the last five, ten minutes or so. They've certainly looked as though they've had more attacking intent. Yeah, they have. I think Crystal Dunge, what she brings is immense physicality, you know, real power, pace. Rose Lavelle breaking there. And they're coming here, the USA, two on two. Here is Lavelle, edge of the D, miscontrol, loose touch. And Rachel Daly very gratefully 
clears that ball away. But suddenly England were at sixes and sevens. Well, it wasn't really sixes and sevens. It was twos and twos at the back, wasn't it? Two and two, yeah. It could have been a lot worse for England with Roosevelt running at you. So back in the World Cup final in 2019 against the Netherlands in the final, that goal she scored just running from midfield. Very, very dangerous in those types of positions. So England in possession, leading by two goals to one. Lily Bryant under pressure from Sophia Smith and field now to Georgia Stanway. It's lovely controlled by Stanway. Takes it away from Lavelle. We talked about the battle between Walsh and Lavelle. It's been a bit Lavelle and Stanway, hasn't it, as England spread it out to the left-hand side. Miscontrolled by Chloe Kelly. Rodman, nice turn, picks it up for the USA and plays it back to Mates. In field now by Coffey. Oh, that's brilliant. Lavelle down to Rodman, bursting down the right-hand side. She's got past Daly. The blue shirts are in there. That's an excellent sliding interception for England. Georgia Stanway coming back there. The USA have it on the right-hand side. Rodman plays it behind off Daly. USA corner, England to USA one, but the world champions are cranking up the pressure. Yeah, they are down this right-hand side. Rodman hugely influential in a little give and go and the pacing behind. I felt like she probably could have taken a touch heavier inside Rachel Daly and really drive, drove into the box. Just couldn't quite pick a teammate out, but brilliant covering by Georgia Stanway. So USA corner to be taken by Megan Rapino. England two, USA one on five live here at Wimbledon. Rapino with a right footed delivery towards the penalty spot. Well won by the head of Millie Bright. The USA will pick it up. Didn't quite know what to do with it there, the US. And in the end, they sent it all the way back via Dunn and Mace to Alyssa Nea, their number one goalkeeper who is in fierce competition at the moment with Casey Murphy. As Flatko Andonovsky, the USA coach, just decides what balance to bring to his starting lineup of this experience of players like Naya who have won World Cups and youth that we're seeing in the likes of the very impressive Sophia Smith as that ball is cleared away by Alana Cook out to the left hand side. England 2, USA 1. It remains here at Wembley. Good interception by Chloe Kelly to win it back inside the USA half. Here now is Frank Kirby. 30 yards out, central position. Laid off now to Kira Walsh out to the right-hand side and her Barcelona teammate Lucy Bronze. And now Beth Mead will receive it over on that far side and play it back to Millie Bright and England knock it around. She's been relatively quiet, Beth Mead, in, in this match. Yeah, especially in the second half. She obviously got the assist for England's first goal. Um, but yeah, she has been quiet and I think it's the way that the USA are guiding the press. They're showing England over to this left-hand side, obviously seeing this left as an area they can win the ball back off England. So therefore England haven't been going down the right as much and that's probably why we haven't seen as much of Beth Mead as, you know, the fans would have liked. England still in possession, midway through their own half, aimless ball forward really from Lucy Bronze will be collected over on that far side by the USA who will build again 21 minutes played in the second half at Wembley England 2 USA 1 the European champions leading the world champions England who have only beaten the USA twice in their last 16 meetings USA in possession with Naya just inside her own penalty area Premier League commentaries coming up for you across the weekend on 5 Live Chelsea against Wolves from 3 o'clock tomorrow Brighton against Tottenham follows that and then on Sunday we have West Ham against Fulham followed by Arsenal against Liverpool and you can listen to Crystal Palace versus Leeds over on 5 Sports Extra here is Rose Lavelle coming forward for the USA good footing by Chloe well, looked like a good footing by Chloe Kelly she looks aghast at the official on this near side who was flagged for a free kick and this is a free kick in a good position for the USA and Megan Rapino has already walked over to take it it's 30 yards out wide right and these are the sorts of areas from which the USA can certainly cause England problems yeah it's a good spot by the referee because it's a little tug of the shirt by Chloe Kelly who gets caught on the wrong side not to see the replay of it just to see how clear it was but the very dangerous position and she's put some brilliant balls in Rapino from these positions already. Yeah, 37 years old, still a brilliant dead ball specialist. And it's another great delivery. England get first contact. USA pick it up inside the penalty area and the effort is curled over. Again, another warning shot from Trinity Rodman who had that equaliser ruled out for a very marginal offside in the first half. It's behind for an England goal kick. 
So England preparing to make their first change of the match. And Wembley will give a very warm reception to this woman here. Ella Two replacing Chloe Kelly. The two goal scorers from England's European campaign. In fact, it's not Kelly that's come off there. It's Frank Kirby. I was thinking, Kelly's not moving. <laughs> so she's staying there. England's two goal scorers in the European final, both on the pitch now. Ella Two and Chloe Kelly still on this left-hand side as Frank Kirby makes her way around the pitch. England's in possession. No, they've lost it now to the USA on the halfway line. England leading by two goals to one. Sophia Smith picks it up for the USA, plays it into Lavelle inside the penalty area, appeal for handball. Referee says, keep playing. Now, Lavelle stopped there because she's felt the ball bounce up, hit her arm. The England players have all appealed, but the referee said, get on with it. But because Lavelle had stopped, she didn't manage to retain possession and England clear away. Yeah, I think she actually stopped because the ball didn't fall how she'd expected it to. I'm not sure she stopped because of the handball or whatever, but another sign for England that, you know, they need to start getting hold of the ball again and start dictating. This is a player on the ball you need, Kira Welsh, to start initiating that just to ensure England, you know, just took the life out of the USA a little bit because it could, the game's in the balance at the moment, isn't it, Stephen? Yeah, it certainly is. And it's something that you, you have to understand. We spoke about it at half time, that this is a quality opposition. You have to learn how to handle these situations. Right now, it's the USA Although they trail, they look more like scoring. They're more confident in possession. They're enjoying more of it. They're looking dangerous around the penalty area. What can England do to knock them out of their stride? They have the two to one advantage. 24 minutes gone in the second half and they've won the ball back. Laid off by Lauren Hempouts to the right hand side. England's in possession now with Millie Bright as they spread the play around. Do we need to see more? urgency more intensity or is this a case of how you balance game management against the world champions leading to one as you are with the need not to sit back and invite them onto you I, I just think that this game you know it's a it's a dress rehearsal for when these teams are going to meet each other and here they come the usa trinity rodman fan brilliantly brilliant sliding challenge by rachel daly forces rodman out to the left hand side of the penalty area rapino will send it back in but the vela gone left rapino goes right but again, it's a case of fine margins here for the USA. Yeah, it was a really good forward run. From Sorry, who made the forward run? Trinity Rodman. Trinity Rodman yeah, it was, yeah, it was Rodman from this right-hand side, out to in, straight down the centre of the pitch in a foot race with Rachel Daly. Rachel Daly does quite well to make that recovering challenge. What do you think, Stephen? Do you think she should stay on her feet? No, I think she just knows that she's got to commit herself to, to win that tackle. The, the big thing for me being a, a former fullback was stay with her. Don't try and step up for the offside. If, you, if you're in any doubt at all, just stay with her as much as you can. The great thing is she committed the tackle outside the box. Yeah. Even if she was to give away a foul, it would have only been a free kick. England cleared the ball away from just outside their own penalty area. Nice touch by Chloe Kelly, who's done well just in those positions, just to keep England's momentum. But Kira Walsh pressured inside her own penalty area. She's got to get rid of it here, Kira Walsh. She sends it back to Mary Earps. He plays it out to the left-hand side and Alex Greenwood. In the end, England play it up to halfway. But, God, that's one of those nervy moments. And you could feel it around Wembley. But you never know. Could it lead to a goal as England build down the right-hand side? Beth Mead, found by Lucy Bronze. Here is Bronze. England 2, USA 1 on five live here at Wembley. Loose ball in the centre of the park. Rachel Daly will pick it up for England. Here is Ella Toon, just overran it. Will push on the USA substitute, Sam Coffey. And the closing down from Lauren Hemp means that Naya, the USA goalkeeper, plays it straight out of play. But goodness me, that was a nervy moment back there. It certainly was. I think she was the calmest player in, in the building and just everyone else was panicking. I could hear it in your voice, Vicky. I don't think she'll be too pleased with you. She's thinking, relax, I've got this. Well, she's on the ball now, Kira Walsh. She is so good in possession, but having seen England give the ball away for the USA's initial equaliser in the first half, just outside the penalty area, sometimes, and I would be the last to question Serena Wiegmann, a manager who's just won the Euros with England, but sometimes, I think for the fans' sake, <laughs> you just need to get rid of it. Here is Ella Toon down into the penalty area 
left hand side oh it's very good work by team she goes down a little bit soft in the end i think the usa just did enough to crowd her out of it but it was lovely skill by team down on the byline you can hear what wembley thinks of that decision but we have to say the big calls have gone england's way this evening the usa equalizer at 2-2 ruled out for offside and england's winner as things stand georgia stanway penalty after a var review given very legitimately for a high boot from mace on lucy bronze and bronze it is in possession now over on the right hand side plays it back to millie bright closed down by rose lavelle she's just so full of running lavelle isn't she and a spell at manchester city so has played against and with some of these england players as well as chloe kelly works it out to the left hand side and now rachel daly in field to kira walsh and to USA won. Just want to get your, your insight here, Stephen. Just going back to the Rachel Daly conversation, the fact she's playing as a forward for us in Villa. Thoughts on that in a moment as England give the ball away and win it back and now play it forward. Lauren Hemp could be in here. She is being pursued very well there. Good defending by the USA. And again, the centre half, Naomi Gurmer. Flag goes up. Offside against the USA, England free kick. If you are playing as a fullback, for your country and playing as a forwards for your club how difficult is it to switch between those two particularly when we're talking about playing at a fullback playing as a fullback at the level to win a world cup i mean nobody disputes that rachel daly is a brilliant left back but if she plays the whole season up front for aston villa is is that a problem i don't i don't think it is personally myself i think it's it's one of those situations where when you know you go away with the lionesses you, ch you change your, your focus and your your mindset okay that's my position now as soon as you step out on the training ground you're in a different position she knows it she knows how to play it she plays it extremely well my my biggest concern would be if i was chloe kelly i'd be thinking we need to work on how to get me on the ball more so whether she gets the ball in the left back position drives inside on the right foot then pings the ball out to her with her right foot and takes that midfield press out of the game and that allows her in a 1v1 situation just feel like we don't utilize the pitch enough on the right on this left hand side do you know what could make it different as well is that if alessia russo was fit we'd probably be seeing her in the number nine and Lauren Hemp out on this left and that gives the team a little bit more balance down this left hand side but I fully agree with Stephen Chloe Kelly's not seen much of the ball because England's you know direction of play has been predominantly over on that right hand side and that's where it is right now with Lucy Bronze England 2 USA 1 here is Beth Mead who's had a very quiet second half England's player of the year but does win a throw over on that far side. 15 minutes plus out of time to play. England are 15 minutes away from beating the world champions. And they're coming forward once more, looking for this third goal. Oh, that's not too far away at all. It was a lovely driving run from midfield from Georgia Stanway. She lets fly. We know she can hit them. But this time it's over and it's wide. Yeah, it's so often we see Georgia Stanway in those positions from midfield a little bit similar to what Rose Lavelle has been doing for the US but she's taken the ball to the right chopped onto her left foot she sold both central defenders and that shot you'd expect her to nestle that into the back of the net it's gone just wide but really good chance for England yeah she's not quite executed that uh, to, to how she would expect but yeah big chance for England that would have been against the runner play had that gone in and Serena Beekman knows it as well we've just seen a shot of her down there in the England technical area just running her hands through her hair now the USA have a problem here Alana Cook the centre half is down so the medical staff are on again the USA coming over as are England's players just to get some instructions but notable here the USA they all come over to talk to Vlatko Andonovsky England are having their own little huddle in the centre circle you've got four players there you've got three players coming over to the England coaching staff. Is, is there anything that they want to change England as we head into the final 13 minutes plus added time? Because they are heading for what is a huge statement win. Make no mistake, yes, this is a friendly, but this is the European champions against the world champions less than a year to go until the World Cup. This is big if England win here tonight. Yeah, it is big, but uh, I think the big thing will be don't make a silly mistake. Don't be the one where you're, you're trying to play a, a cute pass into midfield be sensible with what you're trying to achieve i think the, the big thing with with the usa in the way that they press they press to one side of the pitch they, they try and shut off the opposite side i think if you were to try and get a message on now it would be to get that big diagonal switch on and you'll get yourself out on the uh, on the other side so cook's back up to her feet she's waiting to come back on the usa preparing to make a 
double change. Nair is standing over this goal kick. Let's head back to the championship. Keep your ready. So hell side. We're about to have a penalty, Vicky. Still Queen's Park Rangers one, Reading one. We've got seven minutes to play. Queen's Park Rangers attack. A player of uh, in the red and uh, blue and white hoops has been fouled inside the penalty area. So you can come back to me in a moment, Vicky. We still one apiece. Here come the USA. Thanks to hell. We'll be right back with you. It's Sophia Smith. First down the right-hand side and wins the corner. And she had such an influence in the first half. Her movement in the second has been excellent. But if she starts getting into her groove again, is it in these final 12 minutes plus out of time, then watch out England. Yeah, it's good covering for Millie Bright. You know, she had to come over and fill in for, for Alex Greenwood, who'd been sucked out. So corner to the USA. Megan Rapino swings it in right-footed. England don't really get the best contact on it, but it spins out via a potential handball from Sophia Smith. And now Lauren Hemp is away over the halfway line. She's got support with Ella Toon ahead of her to her left. The England players arriving to her right as well. One of them is Beth Mead, just slight miscontrol, takes a wider the penalty area. England two. USA 1 goes out for a throw. The penalty's been taken, Sahel Sahi. Yeah, and it's Queen's Park Rangers 2, ready 1. Lyndon Dykes from the spot. He scored the equaliser. Now he's put Queen's Park Rangers into the lead, and Loftus Road is jubilant. Queen's Park Rangers 2, Reading 1. Here at Wembley, still England 2, USA 1. England with the throw on the right-hand side. Lucy Bronze trying to hold on to it. Beth Mead leaves it because she knows she's offside. That goes up in the end anyway. USA did clear the ball away, but I think Mead saying, well, hang on a minute. I, I deliberately said that I wasn't involved there, but the USA did make the clearance. And now they are preparing this final change, and it looks as though it will be a triple change for the USA. Izzy, they've not given up hope of getting back into this and you would not expect anything less from the world champion no you wouldn't they'll go right till the end and as Stephen said the key for England is to stay focused stay switched on it doesn't really look like England are going to make any more changes in the next few minutes USA bringing on three fresh legs or three sets of fresh legs should I say um, but yeah like you've got to stay switched on from an England perspective you have to because US have shown it so often they can come back and they will never ever give up and that's the mentality that's got them this success over the last 20 years or so. Free kick to the USA midway through the England half. England 2, USA 1. 10 minutes plus out of time to play here at Wembley on BBC Radio 5 Live. Megan Rapino stands over this from the left hand side. The USA pushing for this leveller. Rapino swings it in and the header was such an important one because it took it beyond the run of Rodman who had given the England defence the slip but it's out for a USA corner. Brilliant Millie Bright, had to win it, had to make sure she got on the end of it because if she doesn't, like you say, Rodman's got a tap in at the back post. That's the concentration levels that are going to be needed towards the end of this game in the final sort of 10 minutes or so. And more concentration needed immediately from England. Megan Rapino with this corner, right hand side, whips it in, little back heel from Rodman, helped away, Rose Lavelle, charged down, oh penalty, penalty for handball, Lavelle appealed straight away, England's players are now coming over to referee Reem Hussein, but she made a very quick decision there, she points to the spot and the USA will have a penalty chance to level things up here at Wembley later on. I'm not so sure it's a penalty, my first initial thoughts was it was a penalty, having seen the replay it looks like it strikes Lauren Hemp on the backside, it's not a penalty at all, this will be overturned. Yeah, we've got VAR and it absolutely, I mean she's coming to the screen, she doesn't need to, they, they, they want the on-field referees to make the decision but VAR very very quickly there has said come to the screen and the assistant on this near side is coming over now as the referee we be saying goes to the screen because there's a bit of a, a conversation shall we say going on with Megan Rapino and Mary Earp she's come out but, but as you say it's definitely going to be overturned and, and if it's not I mean we talk about VAR controversy. <laughs> yeah, the, the only reason I thought it was a penalty straight away was how quickly Rose Lavelle wanted the penalty put her arm up straight away. I mean Hemp has her arms out that's the thing she jumps with her arms out the thing is it just doesn't go anywhere near them. Yeah it's it's a really poor decision from the referee initially to award it she gave the, the decision so quickly she seemed so sure she had a very good view she was well positioned to make the decision I don't think there's anything there that would suggest it's hit her hand other than she's been caught up in the moment I guess a little bit you know loose ball in the box shot someone closing generous. her down. 
I think <laughs> trying to give her the benefit of doubt. But good job for VAR in that instance. It's it's certainly say, not. Do a you know, we, we, I don't think I've said this before in my commentary career, but thank goodness for VAR. <laughs> very true. Yeah, that is very true. So, triple substitution for the USA. Coming off, Trinity Rodman, Megan Rapino, and Naomi Gurma. And here you have the whole range of ages. Ashley Sanchez is on, she's 23. Becky Sabrin, the USA captain, is on at 37. 17-year-old Alyssa Thompson is on to make her USA debut. She plays for Total Football Academy, who are actually an under-17 boys team. So she's gone down that route. She's doing very, very well with them. Just 17 years of age, played at the Under-20 World Cup this summer. This is her first senior call-up. Now she makes her USA debut, and she is very, very much one to watch for the future. England 2, USA 1, and the USA I don't think we'll be saying thank goodness for VAR, given the three VAR decisions that we, we think correctly have gone against them this evening here at Wembley. Lucy Bronze wins the header. Here is Kira Walsh on the halfway line, plays it back now to Bronze once more. And now forward, lovely, incisive pass out to the left-hand side now. And Chloe Kelly, and suddenly the space has opened up. Lavelle is racing to get back. Chloe Kelly plays the ball in. It fizzes behind everybody. Met on the right-hand side by Beth Mead. Tried to pull it back on the edge of the area. Comes back out to Lucy Bronze. Erst to shoot, lifts it in. Ella Toon was in there. It's cleared away by the USA. And out for an England throw. This is what England need, Izzy, in the final five minutes plus out of time. Holding on to this 2-1 lead, but just these little breaks, breaking up of USA possession just to give them a bit of respite. Yeah, it's nothing they're not used to either, Vicky. If you remember back into the Euro final and Chloe Kelly scored for the last five or ten minutes of the game, England just kept the ball, kept winning throw-ins on that far right-hand side. Saw the game out very professionally and similar sort of acts going on at the moment, I guess with what we're seeing on the pitch now, England just trying to suck the life out of the US. If they could get the third goal and make it 3-1, that would certainly, you would think, do the job. England's on the verge of beating the world champions. They've given away a free kick just inside the USA half. The USA, who've won their last 13 games, who are unbeaten in their last 21 matches, but who never, ever, give up until the final whistle these are serial winners players that have done it players that have been raised in that culture even if they haven't played yet at a major tournament Hayley Mason is in possession for the USA the ball forward could turn into an awkward one her arm was up there Mary Epps comes and plays on the edge of her six yard box why? we have four and a half minutes of playing into USA well talk about that focus Stephen why is Millie Bright letting the ball bounce <laughs> inside her own 18 yard box in the 86th minute well, I think it's that that nervousness, isn't it? That creeps yes. in. It's that fear of making a mistake, and you you often panic, and you don't play with it your, your own game. You you start to make silly mistakes, as we've just seen one again. Daily dispossessed far too easily. Here it's Sophia Smith curls it in left footer, but there's an attacking mistake. They had the bodies forward. She's been so impressive. She's been on the score sheet this evening, Sophia Smith. But that was the wrong decision, and England come forward. Header, well won, over on that far side by the experienced Sabrin. England will pick it up once more with Kira Walsh and send it back to Millie Bright. Three and a half minutes to play here at Wembley. England 2, USA 1. Where will this rank? And this feels like a strange question coming off the back of winning the Euros over the summer as England play a long ball forward and it rolls through to Nair. Where does this rank in terms of achievements under Serena Wiegmann? England who have still not lost under Serena Wiegmann. I, for me, I think it's, you know, it ranks quite highly because I think I said on the radio this morning on Five Live that England have had 22 wins under Serena Wiegmann, but how many of them, aside from the Euros, here come England looking for this third goal, it's driven wide by Stanway. How many of those games, apart from at the Euros in the summer, have been against much, much lower ranked opposition where they've won 10, 11, nil? For example, and yeah, this is, this is what I said would be a big, big test for England tonight and yeah they've come up trumps against a very strong USA team that have also learned a lot of lessons as well tonight. The attendance announced inside Wembley 76,893.
as the USA come forward. Very good interception by Alex Greenwood. So it is short of the sellout capacity that we had at the Euros, which was just over 87,000, but still a very, very healthy crowd. Also watched by football royalty tonight. Ted Lasso's here. <laughs> Casting his eye over the game. Jason Sudeikis, which is nice. Andre has got his eye on taking one of the jobs in the future. There you go. Lucy Bronze out on the right-hand side in fields to Georgia Samway. England leading by two goals to one. Two minutes plus added time to play here at Wembley. Out to the right-hand side. They go, and the team will race down, cleared away by Becky Sabrin. And will be allowed to bounce out by Lucy Bronze for the throw to England over on that far side. And I think we've seen the, the different approaches of the two managers today as well. Just the one change for England in this match so far. Ella Toon as England pick it up inside the penalty area. Just the slip at the crucial moment. And it's cleared away by the USA. Vlatko Andonovsky, one substitute enforced, but very willing to use the six in the end. But they, they've been used in a way that you would use them in game. You know, it hasn't been dribs and drabs. It's been two here, three here. We're going to use them to the max. Seeing them win a free kick over on that far side. And Izzy Christensen, they are inching closer to that finish line. They are, and they've, they've seen out this second half really well so far, England. It looks like Lauren James is actually about to come on, going back to those substitutions, Vicky. It looks like she's about to go on, which is a real, you know, real statement from Serena Wiegmann. You know, you have to work really, really hard to get your England caps under her name. Um, and Lauren James has had a really good start to the season with Chelsea. It looks like she's about to come on. Yeah, very good pre-season as well, and she's taken that form into the WSL campaign. It will be her second appearance for England, the Chelsea player. Sister of Rhys James, an England fullback, after making her debut last month. England's in possession. England looking to close out this win against the world champions, the USA. It will be just their third win in the last 17 meetings between the sides. And they're outside the USA penalty area. The ball lifted in and the header just about away on the edge of the six yard box and will be cleared away by the USA and Hayley Mace. Intercepted by Rachel Daly will break kindly for Kira Walsh. Chloe Kelly turns into Mace. Here is Lauren Hemp though. Kelly inside the penalty area pulls it back. Georgia Stanway now 25 yards out central position. Lucy Bronze chips it looking for the run of Ella Toon who's in so much space here. Minute on the volley guides it over the bar and the flag didn't go up on the far side. What a chance that was for Ella Toon. It's a huge chance Stephen but what do you, what you, what's your initial reaction? Mine's take a touch. You've got time. Yeah or well, don't lean back. Yeah. Get your head over the ball make sure that your knees over it and, and try and get it on target. That's said by a free scoring left back. <laughs> <laughs> so into three minutes of out of time. Lauren James is coming on for Chloe Kelly, who gets her Wembley ovation. The hero of the final against Germany at the end of July. And let's head to the championship, QPR Reading, the hail side. It's QPR's night, Vicky. They've fought back from a goal down to win by two goals to one. Trailing to an Andy Carroll penalty, Lyndon Dykes equalised with a stunning diving header and then claimed all three points with the winning goal from the penalty spot. QPR, they're level on points at the top of the championship. Full time, Queen's Park Rangers 2, Reading 1. Thanks to Hale here at Wembley, England 2, USA 1, but the USA into the penalty area. Sophia Smith, right hand side, very good defending by Alex Greenwood, USA corner. She's really grown into the second half, Greenwood. Yeah, she has, and she did really well then to stifle Sophia Smith, who I said about 30 minutes ago was running out of gas, but she definitely isn't. You know, she's she's made channel runs all day, all game, sorry. And yeah, really good defending by Alex Greenwood just to stop her in her tracks, and, but conceded the corner in the process. 90 seconds to play. England under pressure from the world champions who are looking for an equaliser. Lavelle will swing it in. The header is won by Millie Bright. So many times we've said that this evening. And England can try and counter with Lauren James. She just needs to keep hold of possession. She's lost it though. Lavelle swings the ball into the penalty area. Left footer to Ran is up there. Bright wins the header. Comes to Smith who volleys over. 14 yards slightly to the left of the penalty spot. And Mary Earps is saying, slow down, don't give me the ball yet. No, no, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, you give me the ball, I'll have to just knock it up and do a few keepy ups because England know that they are nearly there. They are on the verge of victory against the world champions. Yeah, that learning curve for Lauren James there, trying to dribble out with the ball. She gets tackled. It was a good counter press. 
from the USA who hunted her down, picked up the ball, and Rose Lavelle has just lofted the ball into the box. And Millie Bright, and between her and Millie Bright, Millie Bright and Alex Greenwood, sorry, they defended Lindsay Iran. And I'm thinking, where's the communication around her? Because Mary Ertz can come and claim that ball and she can just ease the pressure for England. 15 seconds to play. England 2, USA 1. Is there time for a final surge from the USA? Lucy Bronze intercepts, wins the ball, plays it out for a USA throw. We have played the minimum three minutes of out of time. The USA in possession on the left-hand side, midway through the England half. This surely now will be the final attack as long as the referee continues to let it play. Good ball from Haran, straight into Lucy Bronze though. And there is the full-time whistle and celebrations once more around Wembley because this line in the side is going from strength to strength. The European champions have beaten the world champions, the most successful team in the history of international women's football. It's England 2, it's USA 1. Izzy Christensen, what have we just seen here in terms of performance from England? Well, I think on the whole, throughout the 90 minutes, I think England were deserved winners. They were the better team. I think in terms of spells of possession, possibly chances created, maybe USA edged it uh, and England maybe got away with a couple, you know, that weren't executed properly by the USA forwards. But on the whole, I think some of England's general play was really good. And I think the key for me tonight was to continue the momentum that they created in the summer and that performance level, it hit heights, not for the full 90 minutes, but for the majority of the game, it hit the heights that got them that European Championship medal. And Steve, when we say that this will be a different test from the USA, a side that in parts are in transition, but still have World Cup winners, multiple World Cup winners in their side and some very promising young players as well. But it was still a test for England and they've passed it. And as we've seen so often under Serena Vigran, they have found a way. Well, that's it find the answers to the, the problems, find the solutions, and they found them yet again. It was a big task for them tonight, and they were put under pressure many times by by the US, and, and the US were exceptional at times. This was a tough game for them, but it's a positive again for in, in the path going to the World Cup for Serena Beekman. All smiles again at Wembley. 23 games unbeaten under Serena Beekman. The longest winning run in Lioness's history is extended to 15, and it's been extended against the world champions. It finishes at Wembley, England 2, USA 1.